Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. Only a handful of people get the chance to see Earth from space. And for one Brazilian astronaut, this glimpse of the planet's fragility set him on a new path to create an environmental utopia, the first in the world in the Amazon rainforest. Here's our story from Brazil. Being in space is something amazing. In 2006, Marcos Pontes was the first and only Brazilian astronaut to go to outer space. Looking back to Earth, we live there, in that surface, that very thin layer. First sensation you have is that we are so small, so fragile. We depend on this planet pretty much for to everything that we we need to survive. Seven billion people living there, trying to have a quality of life. Orbiting over Brazil, Marcos was especially touched by the fragility of the Amazon. Home to countless species of plants and animals, the world's largest rainforest is also a major carbon sink storing greenhouse gases. And this giant natural defense against global warming is under threat. Between 2000 and 2006, Brazil alone lost 60,000 square miles of rainforest, an area larger than Greece cleared for development. Returning to Earth a national hero, Marcos committed himself to using his fame to promote sustainable development. Seeing Earth from space is really beautiful. But here, when you have this close look to the problems, we see that we have to do so many things to change the future of this planet, to be more sustainable. As Goodwill Ambassador of UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, Marcos proposed creating what he says would be the first eco-state in the world. The UNIDO eco-state project will take place in Brazil's northern Amazon region, Huraima. The goal is to demonstrate that development and environment can go hand in hand. My vision about eco-state is something that will serve as a model for the, the rest of the planet and how sustainable development can be done in practice, as a concrete terms, in a real situation. Such as helping industries rethink and innovate how to use natural resources more efficiently in an eco-friendly way, generating more environmentally friendly jobs and enhancing the quality of life. We can bring together different technologies, different methodologies, and develop new things here to show, okay, this will work together. And then this is the way I can kind of assemble this big team called Roraima State. Roraima is the least developed and least populated state in Brazil. Nearly twice the size of England, it's covered mostly with savanna and rainforest. With less than half a million people, almost two-thirds of them live in Boa Vista, the capital. Today, this relatively untouched land is on the cusp of rapid economic expansion. More than ever, Marcos believes now is the critical time to ensure that it will grow sustainably without destroying the environment. What are my state is a very rich state, very rich possibility. Here. So many things that can turn this state into one of the, the best places to live in the world. A place where everybody lives uh, with happiness and a very good quality of life in a green place. With an abundance of land and huge agricultural potential, the region has, over the past decade, attracted economic migrants from around the country. 
including even people like Adam and Edinea Moraes from Sao Paulo, the country's largest metropolis. In 2006, with money that would have gotten just a few hectares of land in Sao Paulo, the couple bought 60 hectares of virgin land on the outskirts of Boa Vista. When we bought this property, this property didn't have anything, practically. Nothing. It was terra de land of lavrado. Many people say, ah, the land of lavrado doesn't produce. It produces, produce, yes, but you have to have the adubo, you have to have the irrigation, you have to have people to work. Their farm is not alone. Over the past several years, large farmlands have begun to appear, encroaching on surrounding grasslands. Other kinds of development are also on the rise. Some worry that such activities may cause irreversible damage to the environment and the global climate. Concerned about Huraima's future, Marcos Pontes met with Governor José de Anchieta Jr. in 2011. Primeiro, nós, nós, nós devemos e vamos desmistificar essa questão de transformar a região amazônica, que quando se fala da região amazônica, se fala de 5 milhões e 500 mil quilômetros quadrados. Isso representa mais de 60% do território brasileiro. Não podemos falar da questão amazônica simplesmente como uma área intocável. Nós temos 20 milhões de brasileiros que moram aqui, que precisam de sua subsistência aproveitar toda essa biodiversidade. Outside of Boa Vista, much of Huraima remains undeveloped. Jobs are almost non-existent. Many live without electricity or access to basic services like water and sanitation. And that's unacceptable. That's really unacceptable. If you see the, the, how they live there without energy, using just a, you know, fire or something like if we we're like hundred or thousands of years ago. And so we have to do something about this. Such as rethinking our development approach. Over the past century, rapid economic growth has brought wealth and prosperity to many. But such economic growth, built on an ever-increasing exploitation of natural resources, has come at the expense of the environment. It has also created a divided world where wealth is distributed unevenly. Today, 1.3 billion people still don't have access to electricity. 2.6 billion have no access to sanitation, and 900 million lack safe, clean drinking water. Marcos is convinced that emerging economies like Huraima must not follow the unsustainable grow now and clean up later approach of the past century. Instead, local officials must consider building a new kind of inclusive green growth. Marcelo Moreira, deputy mayor of Boa Vista and also coordinator of the Unido Eco State project. The sustainability actually means that we want to take care of the environment, but that also means that we want to take care of people and that we want to take care of the economical. And they already have a head start. Under Brazil's federal environmental law, Huraima has already designated nearly 60% of its territory as protected land, mostly indigenous reservations and rainforest. The challenge now is to make sure that the remaining 40% of land and resources are managed efficiently and responsibly. Their starting point sometimes can be as simple as reimagining how industries use their natural resources such as in the timber sector. Look at this, this is waste wood at this time. But if you pay attention, you can see how good it is yet. So this part here, for example, could be used for furniture, could be used for so many different things. While there are environmental laws to protect the rainforest from excessive and illegal logging, little is done to protect this precious resource from inefficient and wasteful practices. During processing, often up to 60% of timber is discarded. Yet instead of burning them in open fire, releasing pollutants into the air, the leftover wood can be turned into electricity when burned in a boiler. 
What they want to do here is to transform that waste in something useful, like energy for this company in, in, for the communities around, and also to provide jobs for the people here in this community. Timber mill owner Zose Zani says that he's looking for a partnership to help him convert waste into energy. Hoje, se eu fizesse o reaproveitamento dessa madeira, eu conseguiria atingir de 50 a 100 funcionários a mais. That's an increase of 50% over the 100 employees currently working for him, all without cutting down another tree. This is certainly a new pilot project of the Equistate project. My expectation is to bring companies and uh, sponsors, institutions from Brazil, from out of Brazil, to help with this uh, project. We can help with, the, with money or with their expertise. In the next five years, Unido will provide technical support for pilot projects like this to serve as examples to encourage industries to produce more with less. The focus will be on environmentally sound technologies to help with achieving maximum efficiency, but minimum waste and carbon emission, while promoting renewable energy and building eco-friendly infrastructure, laying a solid foundation for the development of an eco-state. To do this will require more than strong government policies, money and technology. Transforming a state it's not an easy task. Something that will need participation of pretty much everybody. Over the past year, Marcos has worked tirelessly to rally public support for the project. More than creating iconic buildings with zero carbon, zero emission and zero waste, the goal is to create a culture focusing on sustainability a society that cares about the environment and uses their resources carefully. Some may say this is an elusive utopian idea. But Marcos is no stranger to impossible dreams. Growing up poor like this boy in the outskirts of Sao Paulo, Marcos had wanted to become a pilot since he was seven years old. When I said that, the first thing that I heard was, this is impossible, you're never going to be a pilot. This is just for rich people. And I became a pilot. Actually, I became an astronaut, the first one from, uh, of the country. Three, two, one. Lift off. Lift off of the Soyuz rocket transporting Jeff Williams, Pablo Vinagrada, and Marcus Pontes. So, impossible is a good opportunity for trying doing something. I expect that my next flight in the cities will not be like scars on the surface of the planet, but beautiful tattoos that will integrate with the nature around, and also that you, you can imagine people living inside those cities with this sense of, uh, I'm part of this, and uh, we are all part of this, and I will contribute to maintain this for the next generation.